Hi friends, my name is Krishna. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We discussed about meaning of the ledger. What is the importance of ledger? What is the meaning of posting? How to post transactions from journal to ledger? And we also did some of the illustrations from CA Institute material. I think three illustrations. We have completed three illustrations so far. With that note, ledger chapter is completed. We are done with ledger. In case if you need some more illustrations, some more, there are no some more illustrations available in uh, CA Institute material. But in case if you need, I can take some more examples from other textbooks and I can explain. But you need to comment, uh, I know your requirement in my video so that I can I can shoot videos accordingly. Okay, that is about ledger. Now, what are we going to do after ledger? Immediately after completing this ledger, we need to learn about trial balance. We need to learn about trial balance. What I'm going to cover today is, I'm going to talk about what is the meaning and purpose of trial balance, how the trial balance specimen is going to be, and what are the limitations of the trial balance. These are the three important topics I'm going to cover today. After that, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, different types of, you know, methods uh, to be followed for, you know, preparing the trial balance. And I'll take some examples, some illustrations, and you know, explain how to prepare the trial balance. That might you know, come in different videos. So I don't think so I can cover all these topics in one video. But even for trial balance, for that matter, I can say around four or five videos, you know, we might you know, shoot. Now, the question here is, why should we learn trial balance media immediately after ledger? That is an important topic. You can go to subsidiary books. You can go to bank reconciliation. You can go to bills of exchange. There are many other chapters you know we can cover, right? Why am I teaching trial balance immediately after the ledger? This is an important point. There is a meaning behind it. There is a reason behind it, not meaning. There is a reason behind it. You know the reason is trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances. Trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances. Trial balance is not an account. Please remember this. Trial balance is not an account. Trial balance is a statement. Trial balance is a statement. Why should we prepare trial balance immediately after ledger? Trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances. Trial balance will be prepared completely based on the ledger balances. So, once you know the ledger balances, once you prepare the ledger balances, you need, if you could prepare the trial balance, it will make sense, number one. Second thing, you will get to know the arithmetical accuracy of you know, your ledger. What do you mean by arithmetical accuracy? We will cover all these points now. So, without wasting much time, let me start getting into the subject, let me present my PPT and explain to you the subject. Okay? Right. Okay, guys. Why should we learn trial balance immediately after the ledger? As I said, trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances. It is an extraction of ledger balances. So, once you prepare the ledger of individual accounts, what are you going to achieve after preparing the uh, you know, account in the ledger books? Each account is, will give us the final balance of that particular account. Am I right? This is what I explained in the ledger. For example, if I want to know purchases, I will get to know the final balance of purchases. What does it mean? How many purchases I made in a month? How many purchases I made in a year? 
how many purchases I made in a quarter. If I go through this purchase account, I will get to know the final balance of purchases. Similar way salaries. If I go to the salaries account, I will get to know the final balance of my salaries account. If I go to sales, I will get to know the sales. If I, by, while going through the sales account, I will get to know what is the total uh, you know, sales I made during the month. Any, any transaction, you, you take an asset. How many assets I purchased? How many liabilities I made? So any account you take into account, once you prepare that account, you will get to know the final balance of it. These final balances are required for preparing profit and loss account and balance sheet. These final balances are required for what? For preparing profit and loss account and balance sheet. But if you want to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet, you cannot go through each and every page of you know the ledger. You cannot go through the each and every page of the ledger to note down each individual account's final balance. Time-consuming, time-taking process. So, if you have a summary or a statement or summary of this, you know, account balances, final account balances, it will be easy for you to prepare the trial balance and balance. Sorry, uh, it will be easy for you to prepare profit and loss account and balance sheet. Let me repeat again. This trial balance, so this this ledger balances are the final balances. Are you clear so far? These ledger balances are the final balances of that particular account. Why? What are we going to do with these final balances? These final balances are required to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet. Because you have purchases, you have expenses, you have sales, you have revenue, you have assets, you have you know liabilities. Every account is available in the ledger book. So you will get to know the final balance of each, each and every account. So those balances are required for preparing your profit and loss account and balance sheet. But if you want to really prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet, you need to go through each and every page in the ledger book to go through all the accounts. That is going to be difficult. Instead, if you have a statement or a summary, of all the ledger balances at one place, are you getting my point? If you have a statement or a summary where you get all the account balances at one place, that will be easy for you to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet. That summary, that statement is called trial balance. That is the reason I said trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances. It will give the summary saying, okay, this is the, this account has this balance, this account has this balance, this account has this balance. It will give the summary of all your accounts, account balances in one statement. Then by going through the statement, you can easily prepare your profit and loss account and balance sheet. That is the reason why trial balance has to be learned immediately after the lecture. Because trial balance is prepared based on the ledger balances. Trial balance is a summary of ledger balances. So, you need to prepare the trial balance or you need to learn the trial balance immediately after preparing the ledger. That is one reason. The second reason is trial balance also will establish the arithmetical accuracy of the books. What do you mean by arithmetical accuracy? Arithmetical accuracy is nothing but, for example, while explaining the trial balance, I will tell you this is the debit side and this is the credit side in trial balance and this is particulars. In this, when you start updating the balances, when you total the debit balance and when you total the credit balance, both the balances should match. Both the balances amount should match. What is this? How come they will? How how come? You know these two balances will match. On what basis you are saying that these two balances should match? Guys, please remember, we are following double entry system of bookkeeping. We are following double entry system of bookkeeping. In double entry system of book, bookkeeping, what do we do? For every debit, there will be a corresponding credit. For every debit, 
there will be a corresponding credit. When you have a corresponding debit or a credit, obviously for 100 rupees, if there is a debit, there will be a 100 rupees credit. When there is a 100 rupees credit, there will be a 100 rupees debit. So for every debit, there will be a credit. For every credit, there will be a debit. So if that is the case, obviously, whatever ledger balances you are preparing for all the accounts, your debit and credit balance should tally. If these two balances are debit and credit are tallying, that means you are establishing this, your books of accounts have arithmetical accuracy. Arithmetical accuracy in the sense what it says is, yeah, they have posted accurately. You are, as long as these balances are matching, the assumption what we will take it here is your balances, your, your transactions are posted correctly and that is the reason why your trial balance is matching. So, it authenticates. Trial balance authenticates or establishes that you have arithmetic accuracy as long as both the balances are matching. That is the another reason why we prepare the trial balance. So now you you know you understood the meaning and you no know, purpose. Why should we prepare trial balance? Trial balance is prepared immediately after the ledger, to because it, it trial balance is nothing but an extraction of ledger balances. That is the reason why we need to learn trial balance immediately after preparing the ledger. Second thing, this is the basis for us to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet. Because it is a statement. It is not an account. Trial balance is not an account. Trial balance is a statement. Trial balance is required for preparing profit and loss account and balance sheet. So, you need to have the trial balance. This is the second reason. Third reason is, it helps to establish arithmetic accuracy. How can I say arithmetic accuracy is established? As long as this debit and credit are tallying, that means arithmetic accuracy has been established. That is the meaning of it. So, this is the reason why we need to prepare the trial balance immediately after preparing the ledgers. Right? Then, Krishna, as long as both debit and credit balances are matching, you are saying you are establishing an arithmetic accuracy and books are you know, posted correctly. How can you say that? There could be the same wrong debit and credit would have been posted. There could be several reasons you know, still you can you can you can establish both the balances are matching, but still there could be some errors. Those are the limitations in trial balance. Those are called limitations in the trial balance. That I am going to explain separately. What are those limitations in the trial balance, and how can we you know uh, identify those you know limitations? That we are going to talk about separately. But right now. What, what should be your understanding is trial balance is an extraction of ledger balances and it, it is required for us to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet and it will establish the arithmetic accuracy of your books. Are you clear so far? Very good. Now, let us understand the specimen of the trial balance. Here, serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's all you need to put. Ledger accounts, you need to put ledger, for example, if it is purchases, you need to put purchase, if it is sales, sales, if it is salaries, salaries. So, what is the nature of the account you are, you know, that account name or account number has to be mentioned here. That is the column, ledger accounts. Then LF number, ledger folio number. From where this balance, from which page in the ledger this balance is being brought in here that is called lf number ledger folio number that ledger folio number you have to put it here and what should be the debit amount and what should be the credit amount how do we record this debit and credit amounts that is something there are three different methods to prepare the trial balance i'll explain that separately uh, how to you know uh, the, how to prepare the trial balance by taking all the three you know methods into a you know account that I will take it separately, but right now let us assume that this is the this is the uh, what do you call a trial balance specimen, and we need to prepare. We need to put the debit balance here, and we need to put the credit balance here. And by end of the day, or end of the month, or end of the year, or end of the half year, if you total both the debit and credit, that should tally. As long as these two balances are tallying, you are ensuring that your books are having arithmetic accuracy. Very clear. That's all. Now, once you know the specimen of the trial balance, 
you also need to understand the limitations of the trial balance. I said you are maintaining arithmetical accuracy by preparing the trial balance. Do you, don't you think that there will be some challenges? There are some challenges. There are some limitations. What are those limitations? First one, transaction has not been entered at all in the journal. For example, I purchased goods from X. I did not enter in journal book. And if I did not enter in journal book, that will not come to ledger. If that is not coming to the ledger, that will not come to the trial balance. Is it not an error? Tell me, is it not an error? Ignoring the transaction is also an error. We have not posted that. So, those errors, even though your trial balances, your arithmetical accuracy is established, these kind of errors you cannot identify. Unless you thoroughly check, unless you keep some of the controls, it is not an easy job for you to identify these cases. That means, arithmetical accuracy, though you are saying that it is established in trial balance, this is an example where you can see there is a possibility of an error which cannot be identified by preparing the trial balance. That is the limitation. Are you clear? Right. Next. A wrong amount has been written in the both the columns of the journal. Wrong amount is being posted. For example, purchases I made, purchases account, debit 5000 to cash account 5000. Okay. But while posting this amount in ledger, in both the sides, I mentioned 10,000. Actual amount I purchased what? 5000. But I recorded that as 10,000, 10,000. Is it not an error? Tell me. This is an error, right? But since both the sites I kept mentioned, both the debit and credit I mentioned as 10,000, my trial balance will give the arithmetical accuracy tallies. Both the debit and credit will tally. Then you can say, yes, my books are right. I am able to establish arithmetical accuracy by preparing the trial balance. Very good. But this is an error. Instead of 5,000, you recorded 10,000 in both the sites. It is an error, but that error cannot be identified here unless you do the thorough check. So that is also another limitation in our trial balance. Clear? Next one. A wrong account has been mentioned in the journal. For example, I purchased goods. So what entry I am supposed to write? Purchases account to debit to cash account. Right? What I did is, Purchases account to debit to bank account I have written. Instead of cash, I inst uh, you know incorrectly posted in bank account. This is an error or not? This is an error. I paid cash, but I am saying I paid through bank. But if you prepare the trial balance by posting this incorrect entry, your trial balance will tally. Your debit and credit will tally. But instead of cash, you posted to bank. That is an incorrect account. Instead of using cash account, you post it to bank account, which is totally wrong. But still your trial balance will tally. Can you say that my trial balance is correct and I am able to establish arithmetical accuracy? You can say because as long as it is tallying, you still can say you have an established arithmetic accuracy. But these mistakes are difficult to identify unless you have a thorough check in place. So this is also another limitation. Next. Next one. An entry has not at all been posted in ledger. An entry has not at all been posted in the ledger. What does it mean? I posted a journal entry. I posted a journal entry. For example, purchase account debit to cash account. I posted that entry in journal book, but I did not post that entry into the ledger at all. I wrote an entry, but that entry should come to ledger. No, I did not transfer that. I, I did not post that you know journal entry into the ledger, both debit and credit. 
if i don't post both debit and credit obviously my trial balance will get tallied with other transactions is it sure giving arithmetic uh, arithmetic accuracy for me answer is no it is giving arithmetic accuracy but is it 100% correct just because debit and credit is tallying you can say yes but actual fact is it is not tallying sorry it is not correct there is a there is an entry missed out unless you put the thorough check you will not get to know about it next one entry is posted twice in the ledger this is also another problem i posted one entry for example purchases debit same example i am taking for easy purpose 1000 1000 i posted this entry twice in the ledger i posted this entry twice in the ledger both debit and credit obviously my trial balance will tally because if i prepare my trial balance 1000 1000 here one more 1000 one more 1000 my totals are tallied 2000 2000 so that means what my arithmetic accuracy has been established but this entry is posted twice this is mistake but just by uh, you know looking at the arithmetic accuracy can we say my my books of accounts are correct no you can't say that because this transaction is posted twice so these are all the limitations in the trial balance these are all the limitations in the trial balance so i am done uh, for the day guys now you understood why should we learn trial balance immediately after preparing the ledger and what should be the specimen of the trial balance and what are the limitations in the trial balance next you know video i am going to explain what are the different methods we use for preparing the trial balance right and we will also work upon some of the illustrations clear i hope you understood the concept and if you like the content please like this video and subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and colleagues thank you so much